first of all, I want to talk about something else. This is a suggestion from, they're called the Doctors Association UK, and it's a committee of GPs, and they've written to NHS England with regard to plans for the national vaccine programme. Um, they are excited, they say, and relieved that a vaccination for COVID-19 is in sight. However, their letter says, analysing the current plans from NHS England, they fall short of making it feasible for the maximum number of GP surgeries to administer the vaccine. So what's the problem? Let's speak to Dr Vinesh Patel, who's a member of the GP committee at Doctors Association UK. So what are they not doing, in your opinion, Vinesh? Thank you, Ian, for, for having us. Um, um, there are several issues in regard to the specifications. Let's be clear, we are excited about a vaccine coming out and the possible exit solution to this pandemic. And we do believe that primary care plays an invaluable role in planning and delivering of the vaccine. But the information that's come out is just too scarce. Um, there's a lot of um, logistical nightmares that we have to face and we're not getting enough information around the support we're going to get um, and the asks of the numbers of vaccinations that they are requiring us to do is just unrealistic considering the workforce we currently have and the current work that we're trying to do to recover from the first wave and while we're in the middle of the second wave. It's often very difficult to get exact information from the government, but what have you been told that you know is going to be your involvement and what you still need to know a little bit more about? Sure. So the expectations are that they do want primary care to play a key role in delivering the vaccine. They're asking us to do seven days a week, 12 hours a day, including the bank holidays and Christmas coming up. Um, they're expecting us to do around 975 vaccinations over a seven-day period. Um, and they are expecting us to find the appropriate venues for these. We still haven't been given the right amount of information on the funding or um, the support we're going to get from mass vaccine centres. And we are also struggling with recognising what work, how we're going to man this, um, considering the other work that we have to do. Um, and all of this with the idea that we should be starting to vaccinate by the 1st of December. And as you've already mentioned, we don't have the information around the vaccine either. So we're asking for the research data so we can analyse it. We can take it into account and debate it as well. And this is all vital information for us to be able to counsel our patients and to support them in the decisions that they're making. So I would have thought it was fairly obvious. For, you know, exceptional times call for exceptional manner, um, um, uh, examinations. Um, and you need an organisation that is far more wide-reaching than the one that you've got at the moment because that many people need to be vaccinated in a short space of time. You need more help, and surely there must be some call for another body to help you out, be it the army, whoever it happens to be. Do you think that would be the way forward? Absolutely. I think any support we can get will be vital in supporting the public and our nation in recovering from this pandemic. But we need to be clear, primary care has to be at the heart of this. Um, we are brilliant at delivering mass vaccinations throughout the year. We do childhood immunisations. We've just delivered the flu vaccination during, while facing the obstacles of this current pandemic. So we need to be at the heart of those decisions and get support around us to deliver this. But you're absolutely right. We can't do this alone while we're carrying out our normal business of work as well. And we need the support of others, including possibly the army. Uh, Rumours going around that GPs will get paid extra the number of jabs they do. Is there any truth in that? So we have to... There's a lot more detail around that. People don't quite understand how primary care is paid um, and the work around it. We have our basic contracts and any extra work we do, we have to be remunerated for it. And I, and I think people would expect that. Um, certainly, if you take into account the fact that we have to look at the workforce, the venues, the um, proper PPE that we need, um, the time to vaccinate these patients, um, this is all going to cost primary care and we need to have the appropriate funding to support this. If we don't fund this properly, we may well see the same disaster we've already seen with the government's track and trace where it was poorly tracked, it was appropriately funded but poorly tracked and didn't get the right uh, um, outcome it should have deserved. At the moment, we're worrying that we're not going to fund this uh, vaccination programme appropriately and therefore not give the public what they really truly deserve, which is a good exit strategy from this pandemic. So if I gave 50 jabs in a day and you gave 40, would I be paid more? So at the moment, the detail around the payment is slightly unclear. Um, they are expecting us to reach certain numbers and they are expecting us to hire certain venues that are appropriate with good infection control measures. 
Um, and as I said, they were expected to do this seven days a week, um, 12 hours a day. What they haven't told us is the exact detail around the payment. There is some discussions around that we won't get paid until the vaccinations are all delivered and that we won't get paid unless both vaccines, because each pay person may need two, um, unless the second one is given. And this all means that there's a real potential of um, primary care losing a significant, um, having to in essence, be in the negative um, around this. And again, remembering that they are going to try and look for extra workforce to deliver this while doing their normal business as usual. So it's quite a worrying time for us. We are fully behind the COVID vaccination programme, but we need more detail and appropriate funding to make sure we can deliver this. OK, let me ask you about the subject we're talking about. I'm speaking to Dr Vinish Patel, as a member of the GP committee at the Doctors' Association UK. Um, how would you... Um, convince the doubters to take the vaccine, if at all? I heard some of your callers earlier on here, and, mm -hmm. you know, understandably, they um, a lot of them do trust their doctors, and that's great to hear. I think what we need is the data and information out. We have to respect that the government, um, and as critical as I am of them, have had a difficult task during this, and they are trying to find a solution. But we need good, healthy debate. We need the data out there. And then we need the time to analyse it. Now, yes, of course, we don't have the luxury of the time we would normally have for a, a vaccine. But we still do need some debate and critical analysis of what's going on. And, and really, when we as clinicians are going to be providing this vaccine, have that data in front of us, have that time, hopefully we'll be able to reassure our patients that this is the right step um, and the right way forward to get us out of this current pandemic. Thanks for talking to us, Vinesh. Dr. Vinesh Patel, who is a member of the GP committee at the Doctors' Association UK.